What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hicker Scuba and Marina. And if you dive in cold water or you're a dry suit diver, you can know just how um, depressing and frustrating it can be to rip a seal in your dry suit. Um, and I just, that's what happened to me today. I had two open water students. We were here in our local lake. And of course I ripped the seal, a wrist seal out of my dry suit here. Now. The reason I want to make this video is for a couple of reasons. I'm not really going to go into detail as far as how I replace the seal in this because I do have quick seals. That's the good news. But I want to talk about being prepared for a situation like this. And I also want to talk about when you purchase your gear, you need to look at the long haul of your diving career and not so much what gets you in the water right now. I want to talk a little bit about being prepared for those uh, unwanted situations, if you will, of not if your seal ever breaks, but when it breaks. And if you die a dry suit, uh, you're going to have seal problems, you're going to have zipper problems, and you need to be prepared for that situation. Uh, so when you're looking at purchasing a suit, a couple of things that you want to think about is, is can I go ahead and budget to buy an extra seal or an extra two seals? Um, can, I, can I budget to get a dry glove system to go with my dry suit. One of the benefits of the suit that I wear and with the glove system that I wear is my dry glove actually seals to the suit and I don't necessarily need the wrist seal. So in the event that my wrist seal does break, which obviously it broke here, I'm still gonna stay dry and my suit's not gonna flood. So that's one of the biggest reasons I thoroughly enjoy using dry gloves. Now, the reason that I, I still use the seals, even though I don't need them, understand that, but the reason that I still use the seals is in the event that either my ring for my dry glove system malfunctions, or maybe I even just rip a hole in my dry glove, then the seal is still gonna prevent that water from going in the suit and all it gets wet is my hand. Uh, so there's <clears throat> many benefits to having a dry glove system, uh, but still using a seal system as well. So there's a lot of redundancy built into my suit. And like I said, that's what I wanna focus on today is having that redundancy there. Now, obviously I have extra seals laying around that I'm gonna replace, but when you buy a suit and you're looking at all the extra features and you're thinking about what you can actually afford, not so much the brand of the suit should you be worried about, but so much what features comes with a suit that's going to be beneficial for you. So I try to explain people, when you get a dry suit, if you can budget it, go ahead and get a dry glove system with it. Go ahead, even if you can't get a dry glove system, get the system where you can very easily replace a seal. Now for me, it's as simple as just popping out the ring that's inside here and I can get the other piece of that seal out. So I just literally pop out this ring. I get the other part of the seal out, which you can see here, that's what went here. And then all I've got to do is basically replace a new seal here and then literally slide my ring back into place and I'll have a brand new seal there. So once again, when you go to make a purchase, think about the long haul, think about the end game, what not, what if this ever happens, but when it happens, because guys, it's gonna happen. In my tenure as a diver, and I've been doing this for 30 years, I can count num, you know, a thousand times that I've had to replace these seals. And I'm very thankful that I went ahead and went with a quick seal system when I purchased this suit. So that's just something for you guys to think about. And I'm gonna show you just how quick and easy it is if you have a quick seal system. Um, there's many different types out there and I'm not really gonna get into that as far as what type's the best. It's really the type that's best for you is the type that works. And so basically I'm just gonna get out my extra seal here. Uh, whether you use uh, silicone or uh, latex is completely up to you. Uh, it's all gonna be a personal preference. Me personally, I use silicone for my wrist seals, but I use latex for my neck seal. But even so, my neck seals are still uh, quick changeable. It takes me about four or five minutes on that. This one is relatively easy to do. All I do is just open the package. I'm gonna go ahead and get the seal out. Okay, real simple. <clears throat> And I need to look at the ring system to see how it actually goes in. So this is very important that you always put it in the right way. And mine's gonna go just like that. So on mine, I actually have a beveled edge that I'm gonna use here. 
So all you've got to do on this is I'm literally just going to pull it through the seal like that. Okay, it's very easy to do. And I'm going to fold part of the seal up over the top of the ring. Alright, once I get it kind of flattened out there, I want everything nice and flat. Like I said, guys, you, you need to look at the end game here uh, simply because when you make a purchase, maybe you bought that cheaper dry suit, that $1,000 dry suit, uh, and the seals are glued to the wrist or to the suit itself. You don't have the quick seals. Um, you know, what happens? All right, you tear it up. You're going to have to get it fixed. Well, a lot of dive shops, unfortunately, are not set up to fix dry suits. And if you only spend a thousand dollars on it, you're probably going to have to send your dry suit off to get it fixed. And you're probably going to wait three, four, maybe five, six weeks, something like that to get it back to where if you were to spend a little extra money up front, if you can budget it, of course, um, you could have got the quick seals and it's as simple as that. This is ready to go in. All right. So I'm going to make sure that there's no kinks in it anywhere. Make sure it's even all the way across. Everything looks good. Now, all I have to do is literally just slide it up in here. Now, I've got some talc powder up in there. I'm not sure if you can see it. I'm going to try to get some of that out of there so it seals good. And talc is what we use to kind of lubricate the seals before we put them on. And so, uh, some people may, might use baby shampoo, or uh, baby shampoo. Some people might use baby powder for that as well. I just actually use talc. I go to my local barber and I get a, a bottle of talc. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll link a video. I, I made a video in the past on how I use the talc on my seals. But I'm just going to kind of clean that area out, make sure that there's uh, nothing that can kind of get in the way there. Once I've got it cleaned out good, then all I've got to do is just simply insert it in, slide it down to create a good solid seal. And what I'm doing here is I want it to be even. So I'm going to push evenly on both sides, and then I'm going to rotate, push evenly on both sides until it seats into place okay it's a real simple procedure it's not to nothing too difficult and you can see it doesn't take me no time at all so if i was out at a dive site and this occurred which it did this morning now thankfully i'm here at my shop but if it would have happened anywhere else i could have easily have pulled out my save a dive kit that had my extra seal i could have pulled the ring system out took the old seal off put the new seal on and then slide the ring system back into place. You want to make sure that you get everything in there nice and good. Make sure it's smooth. You don't want any kinks in it. That's where your leaks come from. All right. Now one thing that I do is once I get it replaced, just to verify that the ring is all the way down, I should have a little lip. I don't think you can see it on camera here, but I'm gonna have a little lip here of that seal that is slightly protruding out. And I just wanna make sure it's even all the way around. And it does appear to be even all the way around. And so once all that is done, all I'm gonna do is hold the cuff of my dry suit. And I'm gonna simply pull like this. And I'm not pulling very hard, but I'm just gonna simply pull and make sure that that ring doesn't come out so easy enough guys i was able to replace this and which is a good thing because i've got to use this suit later on this evening with some students but i was able to replace it very easily because i always carry an extra one with me so now what am i going to do i'm going to actually purchase me another seal to replace what this was as a backup i'll put it in my save a dive kit or actually put it in my dry suit bag and that way i'll always have it with me and if I ever fall into this situation again, I can very easily replace that seal. I've actually got to get this ring a little bit deeper down in there. Now, I'm going to dry out my dry suit, prep it for my next dive, get it talked up pretty good, and I should be good to go. So guys, think about it. Before you make your purchase, think about the end game. Not what if this happens, but when this happens, because it's going to happen. You dive a dry suit long enough, you're going to have trouble with it. There's a lot of upkeep to it. So think about it. When you purchase your dry suit, 
Do you need the ring system? In my opinion, yes. Even if you don't use dry gloves, having these quick seals, paying the extra 100, 200, maybe even up to $300 extra, they really come in handy. Um, yeah, you can send it off. You can get your suit repaired. It's, it's about the same amount of money up front. However, being able to repair it on the spot, for me, paying that extra two, three hundred dollars for the suit with a quick seals and with the drive glove system was well worth it to me for this particular situation. And situations like this do happen quite a bit if you dive a dry suit like I do. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it kind of opened your mind to um, things to consider when you purchase uh, expensive dive gear. Dive gear is expensive and of course you can cheap out and go the cheap route. But in the long end or long run, you end up spending more up front, but less in the long run if you get some of these additional features on your suits. So guys, I wanted you to see that. I wanted you to hopefully understand too that even dive professionals, we have problem with our gear. And there's a reason that we do certain things. There's a reason we have certain things in our save a dive kit. There's a reason we spend that money up front. So in the long run, we end up spending less than more. And we have that convenience factor of a little quick two, three, four, maybe even five minute job, and I'm right back in the water. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer it the best I can. If you've got um, questions about maybe a particular suit that you're in the market for, let me know what, you know, down in the comment section below a question on it, and I'll try to answer it. I'll give you my recommendations on that as well. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, simply smash that like button for me. Definitely share it as well. Um, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us, and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.